You're watching Fanboy Versus with your hosts, J.D. Church, Nicole Hale, Chris Triplett, and Chris McFeely. And you are watching Fanboy Versus. I am your host, J.D., joined this week by Chris Triplett, Chris McFeely, and Nicole. Welcome, gang. Hello. Hello. So happy How holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Yeah, December to you. Um, it's <laughs> fanboy versus the holidays. December ween. <laughs> yes. Did we lose this, JD? No, I hope not. Did we? I'm here. Please Hold tell me I'm here. Are no? you there? You I'm slipped here. out of sync for a second. <laughs> Uh-oh. So we may be having technical difficulties with Cox, who is my internet provider. So let's hope not. If not, I'll just keep going on without you all because I'm recording this. So yeah, uh, I'd say it goes without saying that your what your internet provider does suck. Yes, <laughs> very crafty, sir. <laughs> Thank you. What you did there. Very crafty indeed. So, uh, yeah, this is our holiday show. We will not be doing a show next week because totally in already know in America and other parts of the world it's Christmas. And no. So oh, we have to watch Doctor well, that, Who. That, that scares me because of. Yes, I will be watching Doctor Who. That's exactly what I'll be doing. <laughs> it's Christmas, so that means it's Doctor Who. And yeah. uh, <laughs> that's the most important part of the holiday. I don't want to open the presents. I just want to see the Doctor Who Christmas special. Yep. I don't care do. about any of that other stuff. What's important is what the Doctor is doing. So. Exactly. And Gail Simone apparently has been sucked into that world, so I'm very excited about Definitely, that. Definitely. She yeah. has. Go on. I saw her wanting to know about video games with Doctor Who, and I think you responded to her, McFeely, and said, just don't. <laughs> <laughs> Keep well away. Uh, so, Yeah, I, I don't know. I've never tried those out, but I can't imagine that they would be um, the same experience. It's supposed to be a PS3 game coming. I don't know if that'll be any good. It'll be bad, too. Mm. Yeah, it'll be bad? Okay. Ugh. Yeah, can't imagine. So, uh, while we're waiting on Nicole to come back. Um, what the heck is happening? Yeah, I know. The world is <laughs> turning upside there. down. She's still there. Expect okay. an episode filled with technical difficulties. <laughs> we're just going to say that right now. It's going to fly on. Uh, but we're just going to, yeah, we're just going to power on through. So, Chris McFeely, get us started. What's in the news this week? Oh, it's not good news this week in the news, dude. You following on from uh, Jerry Robinson's passing last week. Early this week, we got, uh, the, uh, well, the old adage about uh, deaths coming in threes proved true again with uh, the news that Joe Simon, co-creator of Captain America, passed away this week at the age of 98. Being brutally honest, I didn't actually know he was still alive. <laughs> oh, I mean, gosh. I mean, ancient in, in that uh, Yeah, respect, I mean, you so. know, fair play. That's a good long run. And I'm happy as well that that means he got uh, to see, well, hoping he saw, you know, the Captain America film. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's, that's got to be, nice. you yeah. know, because when he invented Captain America, there wasn't film. So, um, <laughs> no, that's a bad joke. Anyway, um, but, uh, but no, I mean, I, it, you know, I almost wish there was an afterlife because somewhere I just imagine him punching Hitler, and that would be pretty <laughs> awesome. But where, where, thanks where to him, we got got kept punching Hitler. I mean that that was like uh, yeah. the first issue. Yeah. Yep. So. But uh, we also lost longtime Teen Titans artist Eduardo Barreto this uh, this week as well. Same day, only fifty-seven. Yeah, hmm. that sucked. Uh, Complications from meningitis, I believe, were the cause. He's a great unsung hero of DC, you know, mostly recognized for his um, long run on Teen Titans, but done a lot of other work that he's just sort of overlooked for because he had an, uh, an unfortunate tendency to always follow really popular creators on books. Mm. Mm. There's says... a great tribute to him up over on uh, CBR. Oh, check that out if you want to know some more about him, you know. Even his even his death comes following the news of Joe Simon's. You know, there's a, there's a a poeticism about it. Um, now he he did draw, and I saw the. Um, it's odd because I had like just passed it in my shop the other day, but the uh, Luther. Um, mm, yeah. uh, what is it? What do they call it? The unofficial biography or whatever of Lex yeah, Luther. Yeah. 
So um, I, I'm almost interested in picking that up more so than I was before, just to just to kind of see his work on it because I've heard it's good. Oh, watch out, Dell! Put the price up on you. Yeah, probably so. <laughs> Such is the way. Such is the way. So. Uh, those were definitely the two big bits of news this week, but um, uh, on on Marvel's end of things, um, we've had the announcement of their uh, full slate for the second round of season one graphic novels. Now, you may have forgotten about these since it was a while back when we first heard about them, and we haven't heard a lot about them uh, since. They are new uh, hardcover graphic novels that are uh, kind of like Marvel's answer to DC's Earth One in that they're original hardcover graphic novels. Um, dedicated to the, the, the origins of characters, but they're not uh, revamps the way DC's Earth ones are. They're just retellings of the origin. And the first slit's going to be Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, Daredevil, and the X-Men, which will all be coming in the first quarter of next year. And we got the uh, the second round was announced this week, which is going to include uh, Fred Van Lente and Tom Fowler doing the Hulk. Tom DeFalco, surprisingly, and Horacio Dominguez on Ant-Man, and the one I'm totally buying Greg Pak and Emma Rios on Doctor Strange. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody who's followed Pak and Van Lanty on uh, on uh, Herc and Hulk over the last couple of years, like definitely one to check out. But I, being honest, I'm more buying that for Emma Rios' art. Now she did a she did a Doctor Strange miniseries with Mark Waid a couple of years ago. But the way her art has grown and changed, even in the short space of time between then and when she's just recently done the Osborne and uh, and Cloak and Dagger, and is about to do this small Daredevil <clears throat> Daredevil Spider Man crossover with Mark Waid as well. Um, yeah, she is going to produce some crazy Ditko <laughs> visuals. This is going to be good. I. I that one. Yeah, I'm just, just like my brain is exploding at the visuals that are going to be in a Doctor Strange Emerios comic. I mean, it's just going to be fantastic. I'm excited. And you probably can't hear me, huh? No, I, I can't hear you. Okay, good. Crushed it. Yeah. I looked, I, there, was a look of, <laughs> there was a look of wonder there for a minute, and the, the, we've got so many tech issues, I'm freaking out. So, anyway, but yeah, I'm just like, just the visuals that are going to be in that, I just expect. Yeah. I hope I don't expect and too then, much, but yeah, I probably would totally buy that. Truly the uh, truly the worst news of all oh. this week. Oh no! To... Almost hidden, almost hidden, buried deep in the March solicits, sitting right there, just just not even trumpeted within the main body text. Just just a little, just a little, little two words sitting next to the artist writer price page count of, of Tiny Titans number fifty. Final issue. What? What? Wait, I just I just got here. What's going yeah. on? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Tiny Titans ends this March with issue 50. Are you, so... What I, are they doing? I don't get it. Uh, <laughs> you why, why do you hurt like, me is it so? A this is Christmas. You're not supposed I know. to be doing this to me. What oh. a Christmas present. The, the, I mean, the... it's it's really ending and becoming two books like the Transformers comic, right? Oh, if only. <laughs> if only. No, the uh... Tiny Titans I look forward to reading. It's not a project to do. Ti Tiny Titans and not so Tiny Titans. That's the two books. Oh, you yeah. cut deep, sir. Well, you cut the, deep, uh... sir. I did not hear about this yet. Oh, Hang on, hang on. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. It, it's bad, okay? It's bad, but... Baltazar and Franco are moving on to a new book. It's going to be called Superman Family Adventures, which just basically seems like it's going to be Tiny Titans, but with the Superman family. I imagine oh. we can fully expect the Supergirl from Tiny Titans to be the stars of that. Oh. And it's not going to be Superman from the thighs down anymore. It'll be full Superman. And they say as well, you know, a lot of lot of Twitter activity over the death of the book, but the, the word is that um, the characters are not gone. So, you know, we may see some of the Tiny Titans in this book as well. Hmm. So not, not gone so much as changing, maybe, into something else. Yeah. That's almost tolerable. <laughs> almost. I'm not happy about it, though. The, the, the irony is painful. Marvel cancels a bunch of books. I don't get a single one of them. I'm not affected. DC cancels one book. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so now you can feel the pain that the rest of us felt when all the books that we were reading over at Marvel felt. Uh, Ghost Rider. Yeah, okay, the one book that I'm reading that got canceled. But anyway, 
I was not very happy with it. I didn't care when that book was gone. I didn't care. Ghost Rider, not not Tiny Titans. Tiny Titans is Yeah. Good. Let's see, where's my drop <laughs> button? Tiny Titans. Okay. <laughs> Void. A deep, painful void. But hey, I got Transformers Rescue Boss to creep in there and fill that this week. I, I have yeah. it on the DVR. I haven't got to watch it yet. So I'm hearing like... I'm hearing mixed things, but I'm hearing generally positive things from the people that I trust the most. So Rescue Bot is to it Rescue Bot is to Transformers what Tiny Titans is to the DC universe. You know, I, I hate that I agreed with Ender, but I, I kind of agreed to Ender's point, which when people are saying that Rescue Bots is supposed to be Transformers for kids, it's kind of like, um, Transformers are supposed to be No, it's for Transformers. Kids. It's, it's Transformers, Transformers for younger kids. Yeah, younger it's kids. Transformers okay. for kidner, kindergartners, specifically. Okay. It's not. No, he's wrong there. He's just wrong. <laughs> but oh, okay. Well, fine then. Yeah. That wouldn't be anything new. Oh! <laughs> Anyway, um, so Nicole is apparently just going to continue to drop in and out for this entire episode, uh, which is doing terrible things to my really beautiful video setup, but I'll press on. So, um, care about looking at our head. No, not really, I'm sure. Maybe the YouTube people, but. So, uh, well, I guess that's it for the news then, right? That's... Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, it's, uh. It's Christmas next week. That's news. Yay! Yeah. Yay! Yay! Christmas. Was that, uh, that new uh, Ghost Rider trailer? Was there anything that came out of that? Oh, yeah, that did happen. Wow, that film looks dreadful in a massively <laughs> entertaining I didn't see way. the new trailer yet. I just saw that. <laughs> well, if you from... saw the first trailer, you saw this trailer. Oh, okay. So it's pretty Well, well this trailer gives us plot. Now Actually, it's... that's true. Yeah. What is he trying He's to trying save to... the life of a child who might turn into the Antichrist? <laughs> <Yeah>. He's what? <laughs> But the kids, the kids' name is Donnie. Are they going there? Is it a Donnie Cash? Ooh, ooh, that would be awesome. Okay. Uh, I want to see it. Not that I care much about Dan Catch, but whatever. Oh, I'll go see it. It's in February. I go see that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, I guess, and it's it's sort of related between things, which is the G.I. Joe Retaliation oh, yeah. trailer oh, came yeah. out this week wow. as well. What happened there? Good. It's like somebody decided to actually make a G.I. Joe movie. I know. I, crazy. <laughs> you know, my commentary on it was, like, my first post was that it looks like a G.I. Joe movie with Bruce Willis. And I yeah. realized that that sounded derogatory, but I didn't really mean it to be. <laughs> you know, I really meant to be, this looks like a G.I. Joe movie that Not has Taylor. Bruce Willis in it. You know, like, like, that's a good thing. The last movie... I don't know what it was. It was certainly Bruce didn't... Willis at the end, be damned. Like, that trailer might as well have just cut it off banana as soon as Cobra Commander came up with the chrome face. Yes. Mask. I was like, that okay. Was all I mean. it's, done. That was it for me. You done. got it. Thank you. I'm out of here. Here's Woo! my 15 bucks. Thank you. <laughs> but, they they uh, had me when the, the Cobra flags dropped from the... Yeah. Uh, oh, the yeah. <laughs> I, mean, some I good... thought the, the strangest thing when I watched the original G.I. Joe movie that just really puzzled me. It was like, they, they want to make a G.I. Joe movie. And they've made a movie of the cartoon instead of making a movie of the comics. That's what struck mm -hmm. me as odd, because the comics are the thing. For, I mean, I'm not a member of the G.I. Joe fandom or anything, but as I understand it, like, the comics are the thing. They are the core Joe canon, and certainly to the exclusion of, of most other things. And I was really surprised that the film was basically a film themed around the silly, weaponized excesses of the cartoon. Whereas this, and this one seems to be the same again as well, but, like, more so. Yeah. As long as I don't get exosuits, I'm happy. Yeah, yeah <laughs> what was that? Uh, anyway. I don't, I don't remember wanna... that. It, it does seem to be G.I. Joe Renegades, the film. It does. Yeah. It does have that, that sort of Which is, presumably quality. then, when, when they realized that they were producing a film that had such a similar theme to it why they decided to hold off on another season of renegades and then functionally retool whatever's coming next from that to maybe flow out of the film a little better so like is roblox going to be voiced by the rock in the second season then die in the first episode <laughs> then die in the first episode and become a zombie oh my god and i swear to god I, I have nothing against the rock but terry cruz should have been roadblock yeah sorry Quick no. change there, um, yeah. And, but I, you know, I don't mind the. Uh, but the Bruce people, I, I, I don't know. I've come back to the Bruce Willis thing a few times, <laughs> and 
Um, well, in particular, he's playing Joe Colton, which for those that, yeah. that don't know and haven't, and like I said, I didn't know I had to research it um, oh, or have someone told me, which is that he's supposed to be the original G.I. Joe. The, Joe Colton the is the Joe. the original, like, whatever the... 12-inch doll. Yeah, the 12-inch He's doll. got the Kung Fu grip or something? Is that what it is? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and apparently his you know, cholesterol I mean, is a little he, high. He appeared in the... Um... He was Marvel. in the comic, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, yeah, was yeah, in the, yeah. he was in the last uh, G.I. Joe Transformers crossover as well. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So, I mean, he's, you know, that character's been around and stuff. It's not something... He's the guy that the, the team is named after. Yeah. Which kind of works, I think, for Bruce Willis. You know, I think that, you know, I think it kind of works for him. And like I said, I don't know anything about the character. Otherwise, I haven't seen it in the fiction. I don't, but... I don't know that there's much to know. He's just Chuck Norris. Yeah, you know, so he's... there you go. <laughs> Bruce Willis is fine. Uh, so I don't think he has much of it. He's just that cipher, that twelve-inch realistic with the re well. He doesn't have realistic hair. Bruce Willis is yeah, his <laughs> that's, that's long gone. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I think it's kind of cool. I, I mean, I, I like it's the like, line. Looks like she'll make a better Lady J than Wonder Woman as well. So, mm. so, yeah. so, so that's the that thing. That's so that looks like her tanning, yeah. All right, so after stalling for like five or ten minutes, we still don't really have Nicole back. So I guess Skype hates her. It really yeah. does. I like and, her today. Yeah, we may have to try to press on without her. So um, I guess we'll get started then with reviews, as it was, and Chris McFeely's video is now frozen is on it, my hang side. On, hang on, is J no? See, is JD freezing up for anybody else for a second? Yes, I'm. I'm yes, it's not on my yeah. end as well. You're, yeah. you're you're freezing for a second, and then you're picking up exactly where you left off. Awesome. It's like freaking, so, it's weird. Yeah, but it means so Maybe we're talking to JD in the past. Hey, JD! I know, you seem to still be operating in real time. What the fuck? Yeah. Uh, total total JD, technology JD, fail. Turn right. Right turn left. <laughs> turn go left. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, um, the funny thing is, is that um, since I'm recording locally, my video is going to be like solid, and uh, <laughs> it's you guys that sound crazy, so it's kind of awesome <laughs> on my side. So it's business as usual is what it is. Right, so now, so uh, they're going to be like, JD's fine, I don't know what's wrong with these guys, they're like talking about him being in the past, I don't know. Um, so anyway. Maybe that means we are too. Ooh. Oh, I may have gone cross-eyed. <laughs> All right, then. Well, as uh, Nicole once again attempts to join the call, uh, we will go then to Chris Triplett to begin oh, oh. the process of reviews. Comic books. Yes. Yeah. The funny book things that we talk about on this show. And we have more uh, live listeners than usual as well today. I, it's, this, it's, it's like, this is hella like entertaining. Twice as many normal live listeners this week. So, you know like balls, you know? yeah. Hi, all the live listeners. Wave if you say no. hey. Can Wave. I get an A, man? Yeah. <laughs> Hip hop uh, oh. uh, To talk about something though, before I get to uh, my review, I wanted to just kind of you know, touch on like I got Avenging uh, Spider-Man number one and two because um, I missed them. Yeah, I know. You didn't like them. <laughs> I didn't like the first one. So they're, they're not they're not bad. They're just not amazing Spider Man good. Which you know, did you really expect it? I mean, um, really? I you didn't know, read the, I don't know. I could hope, I guess. But um, the the reason I wanted to talk about them real quick was just mostly because of the uh, the Marvel digital thing. Because mm. these are comics that are coming with the code. Where like if you buy the the physical issue, you get a code, you enter it into the website, and then you get a digital copy. So I tried that. And I was praying and praying and hoping that it would be through Comixology, and it's not. It's through the Marvel website. Of course it is. And I tried it through the Marvel website, and I started reading through it, and it's not good. It's 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 bad. <laughs> I know this is free, but I'm thinking, okay, yeah. what poor sucker is buying this off of the website and paying the, what, $4? This is like a $4 comic. I assume they're charging $4 for the digital copy of it also. Yeah. I mean – it doesn't navigate good. It. Uh, I was reading the second issue well, I guess nobody really of Avenging Spider-Man, and on one of the pages, like the top of the page, had a gray spot. Like you know, like you know, like how like if a comic gets scanned or something, sometimes the scan goes bad, and there's like something funny with it. It looked like somebody had scanned a comic, and the top page of it was nothing but gray, but I could still see the lettering on it. I mean, wow. 
This is mm. bad. <laughs> I got That's to the true. I got to the end of the comic reading it, and I had to I had to even write this down because I thought it was hilarious. So I finished the issue, and like when you finish a comic in like other digital things, it'll say like, "Hey, you just finished this comic. Do you want to write it? Maybe you want to try this comic because you might like it." I got to the end of Avenging Spider-Man number two, and it said, "Thanks for reading. We hope you enjoyed Captain America Reborn number one <laughs> by Captain America number two." Bye, Captain America number two, and continue the adventure. Thanks. Uh, <laughs> I mean, a reader is you. And I was thinking, yeah, I enjoyed Captain America Reborn number one when it came out two years ago, but I didn't just read it just now. <laughs> so it's got problems, wow. is the point I, I wanted to make. You know, it's, it's uh, yeah, buggy. I assume. I assume the Ultimate comics are going to be the same way when they come out, because they're doing the digital thing with those, aren't they? Yeah, and I think the uh, first one's going to be the uh, Spider-Man, I guess, that I'll get. So. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I mean, but, I'll buy the comic, of course, but still, I'd, why can't they just do it to Comixology? It's so awesome. Comixology is good. Because it's not their thing. They want you to get yeah. their thing. I if don't they're going to give it away for free, they want it to be <laughs> their thing. I don't care about their thing, though. That's the problem. Well, but that's yeah. what I wanted to rant but about. I they just wanted care. to rant about that. Real quick. <laughs> I know they care. <laughs> but I just wanted to rant about that because okay. I thought that was just really kind of crazy and st- stupid. But um, so Batgirl number four. So, so basically, well. you just complained about something you got for free. Yeah. Just well, to I know, I, just to it, bring it full it circle. Sucks. I'm just no, I'm not being critical. I'm just it, saying. <laughs> it sucks that I'm complaining about something I got for free because I understand I got it for free. Like for free, I guess it's fine. You know, hey. It's a digital copy, but I'm thinking, okay, if that's the same copy that somebody's getting, if they're actually buying it True. off of their website, I'm thinking, boy, those people are getting screwed over. So, you know? so what you're really saying is, if you're gonna pay for it, go to Comicsology. Yeah. If okay. you're going to pay for it, go to Comicsology because Comicsology is nice. Awesome. And that's get a Kindle Fire to, to do and, it on. And, and, and I'm not getting paid to say that. I wish I was, but <laughs> I like Comicsology. I like it, and I recommend it. It's, it's good. In fact, I. I read my comics this week off of Comicsology because I had no choice. We but, are you know, unpaid it's... advertisers. Yeah, but let, let's let's talk about comics. <clears throat> let's talk about stuff that I like. Uh, did anybody read Bat- Batgirl number four? Did you guys get around to it? Yeah. Yes. I have it. Okay. Hey, we awesome. all read it. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, Woo-hoo. those of us. See, I'm, I'm gonna thought... be interested to hear your thoughts now on this one. Well. Uh... Overall, I, I I liked it. I mean, it was it was okay. It's just that um, this is like the the, the big. It's supposed to be the big issue. This is like where we end the whole storyline with Mirror, which is strange because like the, the last issue um was the one with uh, Nightwing. Yeah, and that really felt out of place. I felt like, you know, does this really need to be in issue three? Shouldn't this story be like issue five or six or something down the road? And and like number three, actually, you would be leading us more towards the conclusion with Mirror, and, and I, I, I mean, just not not to complain about that issue, but just I just felt like that issue just was kind of not not good, and it just didn't 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 work for me. It, but it like was a, a fine total, issue. Yeah, total mm. interruption was, of what was going on. It was a fine, you know, single issue story, but we, at this point, you know, the way the story's been going, I kind of felt like they need to get through this first before they went to like a kind of a single issue standalone mm. story. You know, uh, unless like they're planning on making Mirror like her, you know, her master villain like the Joker or something like you know, oh, he's this ongoing threat. But no, I don't want that. Oh, no, oh wait, this, this no. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh wait, no. <laughs> you read wait, no yeah. That, yeah. So like, I started reading the issue, and like, it starts off with uh, th- she has the the dream sequence where she's having like bad bad dreams about her still being in the wheelchair and about. You know uh, how she how she feels about it, and she kind of like, you know lets it go and says, "Oh, it's it's just survivor's guilt." You know, I'm just you know I've just got survivor's guilt. But uh, basically, uh, what's going on is, is this this issue takes place on Christmas Eve, and uh, she's you know kind of yay Christmas. This is a Christmas themed episode because like Journey in the Mystery also has a you know Christmassy yeah. Christmas. Mm. Yeah, yay. But uh, so like she's uh, she starts to um, you know, I don't want to like go page by page about it. I mean, there's like no. things about it that I really liked. I don't want you to either. Uh, <laughs> yeah, like the the stuff where like she goes out just to fight some uh, bad you know, some some guys you know, uh, mugging some yeah, people. Yeah. And I love well, the whole thing. They've they've, they've the got thing, an yeah. app on their. 
I yeah, love it. There's an app for that. <laughs> There's an app for Batman finding where Batman app. is. <laughs> they have a Batman app that tells them that Batman is stopping a like a like a bank robbery or something downtown, so they can mug these people down in this alley. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but when when like Batgirl shows up, and Batgirl starts beating the crap out of them. I think I think one of them says, "I don't have I don't have a Batgirl on my app." <laughs> There's no button for her. There's no button for Batgirl. Uh. <laughs> but yeah. And uh, yeah, it's just like a little thing, but it, it it was just funny. But it fits in with the story because after she saves these people, uh, they talk about how you know, thank you, thank you, you know, you saved us, you know, and we'll get to actually see our kids, you know, on uh, Christmas Eve because of you, and that kind of like, clicks with her. With the whole stuff with Mirror, she uh, she decides, well, you know, Mirror's whole origin is that his whole family died, including his two kids, and it's Christmas Eve, so if she needs to find him. Where does she think he's going to be? Well, he's he's going to be visiting in his family in the graveyard. Uh, so she she leaves him something. I think it was like a note or something to kind of mm-hmm. you know goad him and uh, point him in a direction so she could like you know hey I'll, I'll have him on my terms and and uh, take him down. And, and it basically is just a fight sequence. You know at that point you know she has a big old fight with him in a uh, hall of mirrors. Yeah, in a hall of mirrors, which is awesome yeah. and ironic and interesting. And she does make that great crack as well. Exit the wallflower, enter the dragon, and like enter the dragon. I loved that. Mm-hmm. that originated yeah. the whole fight in the hall of mirrors thing. Mm-hmm. That was pretty awesome. That was pretty awesome. Yeah. And, you know, and yeah. I I, I I did like the um the part though. Well, I liked and was sort of interested because it's like I felt like I was watching like a seventies like detective you know sort of drama when she's talking to the people mm. and they're like kids and she goes kids i gotta go look at something you know it's it's like any of those where it's like there's always the trigger thing and then the detective figures it out but. jeff goldblum in independence day yeah so. exactly exactly <laughs> like that yeah and she does like a very kind of uh classic batman-ish villain way to defeat him by uh projecting that that footage of 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 uh of what had happened uh to to his family and then like it just kind of like, you know projecting back onto him and him freaking out it's like oh god oh ah, yeah. ah. it's like That's it's like cool. scarecrow yeah. getting, getting getting attacked by like his yeah. fear gas and then like seeing batman as like a monster or something i like that i thought that was a, a good yeah. way to kind of take she, him down she figured out how to and, be uh, a bat family hero which is to be a total dick to the villain that you're fighting yeah. but <laughs> does anybody she... think like that this next bit was just really kind of like off killed her. Like she delivers this great. It's a good speech she delivers about miracles and how Gotham sucks and the best and worst yeah, stuff. And you take your that. miracles whether they deserve. But it's like the la- the page beforehand. He's screaming and ranting. She's coming at him with the fist and goes mirror. And you're expecting to turn the page and her to deliver some awesome one line quip as she punches him out. And instead she delivers war and peace. Yeah. 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 They, it's yeah. really a lecture. Um, yeah. Eh, I mean, you know, it's like, I, I get why like, they... mirror. I guess I've got seven years bad luck, <laughs> or some <laughs> well, shit like that. You know? you know, but it's different than like Batman, who would have just beat the crap out of him. I know, um, but it just yeah. seems it seems staged a little weird to me. Yeah. Oh man, the cold's really trying hard. Oh God, no! May... What's that? I'm on, a, I'm on a different computer. <laughs> okay, volume very high. Downturn. Please. It works. Yeah, okay. I, I, yeah, I'm on a different computer. So. Okay. Oh my gosh, we've got. Okay. You might back your volume down just a hair, and then we'll be good. Um, oh, the volume. Okay. Yep. Um. Yeah. Um. But it, it is. It. Yeah. It's a little lengthy, but yeah, it's, it's at least better lengthy, than. But... I mean, it, at least it isn't like a uh, a sort of um, what am I thinking? The uh, CSI, like, meow, you know, where it's like <laughs> mirror it's reflect not, this. I guess Bam! I seven years bad luck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's not bad. But but I do like you. Know, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit much. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bit much, but I do like you know the, 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 what she keeps saying. You know, you, uh, it, it's miracles whether they deserve it or not, and she says it like a couple of times. And yeah. then she's like, you know, believe me, I know. And then you, you kind of get a little bit of closure with that. I because mean, we even found out in this issue, I kind of skimmed over it that, uh, you know, how she, how she, how she's walking again. She kind of, you know, kind of touches on it a little bit, talking about, you know, a clinic in, in Africa and, you know, saying that, you know, we don't say cure in the house because, you know, that's a word that we don't use. 
you know, at the Gordon house and everything. And you get like a little bit of stuff like that in it, which I, I, I feel like you get a little bit of closure. But I, I think honestly, at the end of this issue, all I can think about, okay, so the mirror stuff is done. There's a little bit of this you know, closure with her now, you know, uh, walking again. What are they doing in the next issue? Well, and, uh, and, and we, we get we get the the the, the big ender, and I I ain't gonna say what happens, but a character shows up at the end of it. Boom, you know, splash page. What's going to happen in the next issue? Because this character showed up. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm thinking about you know, more than that. You know, what's going to happen? Well, I mean, I'm sure that will all come about as well. It's just you know, and I would I would really like it if I could say that was the. Did I fall out of time again? Did, did I lose somebody? Because somebody I, was talking yeah. and then they stopped. I think we lost. Now we're losing Chris McFeely. <sighs> you there? I'm here. <laughs> You're there. Okay. I'm well, here. Chris McFeely is now not here. So I didn't oh hear my gosh. Chris, what did he say? <laughs> so he'll be back in hopefully just a second. Um, oh, but, I, but well, I did like it, and I'm going to continue to get the book. I'm not going to be like, oh. I know. I'm not dropping Gail Simone's only book now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna keep getting her only one now. Yeah, oh my gosh. it's it's more than that, you know. It's more than just like, hey, this is Gail Simone's only book. I like Batgirl, you know. I'm no, interested. I like it. No, like I said, it's different than than Batman I, in that respect, you know. I really want to know like what her uh, um her roommate was gonna tell her because you, know, uh, Babs told her about you know how she used to be in a wheelchair and then she was gonna tell her a big secret and she didn't. <laughs> she didn't have time and I think there's something that's gonna happen there. Yeah. Yeah, it does seem like there's something else, you know. It's like, it's like a, it turns out, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm the scarecrow's daughter, you know. I'm yeah. Gonna kill you. Right, or yeah. Something I'm like gonna that. kill you with the ceramic knife. <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be interesting. Yeah. So. No, I actually like this one. I thought it was good. No, yeah. Yeah. I, I like the story of the mirror. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it, I don't think he was like an earth-shattering villain, and I don't know that we'll see him again, but. No, but um, he was an interesting villain uh, just because he had a good backstory, I thought. Yeah, it was an interesting way to, like, you know, tie, tie a villain into like, well, what she's going through, you know, without it being, like, the Joker. Because I well, like, yeah. it could have been the Joker, and that would have been, I think, too much. You well, know? it's like, what if the Punisher was a Batman villain, I think, is basically what you kind of get out of out of this. You know, it's like, what if... What if the what if the Punisher from DC instead of becoming like a semi good guy a vigilante had become a crazy bad guy then you know he would be the mirror basically <laughs> It's like your 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 kids are alive but mine are dead and your kid should have died boom yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that yeah It's like the anti Punisher oh my gosh that comic would last like two issues Yeah that would be it Ah <laughs> uh, Hopefully, Chris McFeely will come back. Yeah. Maybe. This yeah, is full of technical fail this week, but we are just yeah. powering on. No. Fanboy yeah. versus oopsies. Yeah, really. It's, uh, it's, we have it's... that Christmas spirit in us that's like, you know, driving us forward. Yeah, I right. think my computer's <laughs> decided to go on Christmas vacation. Yeah. <laughs> so, and that huff lets that's us that's know right. that Chris McFeely is back. <laughs> um, For Christ. Thick. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's bad this week. It's bad, people. So, okay, so um, have we moved on yet? We're about to move on. We had just finished up. If you have any final thoughts on <laughs> Batgirl, <laughs> you want to okay. make the final thoughts there? Yeah, they'll, they'll be completely contrary to everything else because this is this is my last issue about no! Batgirl. Uh, well, okay. um, the wait. Why did you yeah. drop it, by the way? I I just feel, I did, well apart from like the rather painfully telegraphed ending, and the it's like oh the roommate has a secret what a shock I could not yeah, have I, imagined. Yeah, like Scarecrow's daughter and she's gonna like murder her at night. That would be awesome. Yeah, because <laughs> if the if the crazy look on her face when she unwraps her cooking, I mean that's that's gonna come into your bedroom with a knife at night, Barbara. <laughs> you know there is some artistic slips in this issue, and that's one of them. Because I don't think whenever you unbuck, you know, you get a cooking utensil for Christmas, the first thing you do is wheak it out of the box and grin like the Joker, like and holding it up. And, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, well, I like, is this the family. daughter? Is this the daughter of like Sweeney Todd or something? <laughs> Uh, you know what? Uh, I don't care, and that's yeah. perhaps its biggest crime. Is that you know, as like 
I knew from the second that character was introduced, a couple of issues, I mean, oh, I have a secret. Oh, really, do you? Well, you didn't manage to make me care about you before you revealed that fact. <laughs> and, um, you know, I think it just, the mirror really fizzled out as a villain. Oh, I like yeah. I mean, like, was, I liked the first, he was great in the first issue, and is, is it a good origin? But in the third issue, given how just completely, he had nothing to do with it, basically, you know, it's yeah. just the way into a Nightwing thing. And then in this, it's like she fights him in a hall of mirrors, and it's kind of, kind of it, really. I mean, he, I mean, I guess there's probably a, it's probably slightly deliberate that she, he just serves as a reflection, a reflective, uh, uh, you know, for something to reflect Barbara back upon herself and help her come to these conclusions about herself, which was something we had already concluded anyway. And, you know, something that I definitely... What I say about Batgirl? It's, it's like, I can't actually technically fault Batgirl. That's, that's the thing about it. I can't... I can't really have a go at it because it's doing everything the right way. Mm-hmm. You know, it, I've said, we said it before, a lesser writer would come at it from a different direction, throw it back in the tights and just plow ahead, you know. A good writer on here in Simone, she is approaching it all the right way, doing all the post-traumatic stress stuff. It's definitely just capital R, capital W, the right way of doing this story. Um, but respectful treatment has not, in my, in, for me, has not mitigated the fact that four issues in now, this book has not made a case for why Barbara should be Batgirl. The mission statement of yeah. this book has been, if we make Barbara well, Batgirl, then we can do post-traumatic stress stuff. And that is not a reason for Barbara to be Batgirl again. And we all know that the reason Barbara is Batgirl again is because Dan Didio has a massive erection for her as Batgirl. <laughs> it's because everybody remembers her as yeah, Batgirl. I'm basically. really going to buy a book with spoiler as Batgirl. I don't I think anybody don't, did. Well, but, hey, it wasn't a bad book. I liked it. Did you lose Well, no. I did. Yes. Sorry. I did. <laughs> I, I, the sun went out from my end. <laughs> yeah. He's doing the same thing you're doing. Um, <laughs> I, I just, look, at this point, I don't feel any case has been made for Barbara because she can't go out and she can't freeze up uh, every time somebody pulls a gun on her. And she can't complain about how she's out of practice and about how she shouldn't be doing this perennially. She has to get back to doing it. And I haven't seen a reason yet. You know, that'll probably be like the story where seen... like, she punches the Joker in the face and then she's better. You know? <laughs> she's done that. Yeah. Uh, and since he doesn't yeah. have his face, then that should be easier, right? <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. He could just work that thing off a punching bag or something. <laughs> no, I, I, um, th I, I just haven't seen what she brings to the thing as a character that Steph didn't or Cassandra didn't. Or, or, or even at this point, really, what distinguishes her from Batwoman aside from not being a lesbian? Yeah, you know, and yeah. and 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 what she's bringing to it is the issues that stem from the fact that she shouldn't be Batgirl. Hmm. And it's just, you know, as I say, it's treating it totally respectfully. The the um the subject matter. Well, it's not the writer's choice, and we know this. You know, this was not Gail Simone's idea to do this. This was handed down. And she's absolutely approaching it in the best way possible. And I think she's approached it in such a way that she's really brought herself around to the idea as well, because she always speaks, you know, she, she seems to be on board with the idea at this point. But I have come to the conclusion that I am not. Uh, I'm good the with book, it. I'll the keep book getting it. Keeps, it's just... If I put my ear to this book, I can just hear it going as it creaks audibly <laughs> under the weight of the baggage yeah. that the whole idea carries with it. And I can't get past it. I, you know, I, and I have no particular attachment to Barbara. That's the thing. I have no particular attachment to Barbara as Batgirl or as Oracle. I'm not, I wouldn't class myself as a fan of the character. Just as somebody from the outside looking in on a character that I have no attachment to, one way was better than the other, and this is not the way that is better. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I mean, you get this surprise at the end. Well, I say surprise at the end, and I'm like, and which one are you? Are you the biological <laughs> one, or are, are you the one that, you know, it's like, I don't know what 
physical state Barbara Gordon's familial continuity is in. Right. To, to even uh, I, know was, I was thinking about how you go, honestly. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, well, that means that this is not... Um, I, I can't really let into this without spoiling it. Yeah. So, you know, that, that means that this is... It's just hard. It's well, it's too hard to get stuck into. Just suffice it to say, I, I don't even really know what to make of the character who's appeared at the end, because like so much else that kind of gets in the way of understanding this character, I don't know what still stands for her. I don't. We don't know at this point if she was still Oracle. We don't know what she did the time she was in the chair. We don't know where her familial status stands. So we don't know exactly. Yeah. Yeah, is, you know. there seems to be some editorial notes on that, but we haven't seen it in the comic, so. Hmm. You know, which would seem it's to be the, the, it's the, the part only that matters. Book that I get that I feel has been adversely affected by something like that, and that is another example of the book just creaking under the weight of historical editorial continuity problems. You know, it's like with some characters, like with well, Batwoman was written from before that, so it doesn't really matter. But it's like with action comics, it's a fresh start. You know, with uh, what else am I getting? Firestorm was a fresh start. Um, Justice League's a fresh start. So yeah, I guess all the ones I'm getting are the fresh starts, whereas this one, but then even the ones that aren't, like, this book seemed to me is the one that's making me ask the most questions, but it's not supposed to be making you ask those questions, because they're, they're not mysteries. You're not supposed to be looking at this and, and wondering about them as if they were mysteries with questions that need solved and will be down the line. They're just problems. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which... I think overcome. the only question that I actually asked when the comic came out was like, you know, did was she in the chair or was she not? And then I was surprised that they they answered it pretty quick. Oh, I, I, I thought well, would have been in the chair. Maybe, maybe they wouldn't. You know, it's like I actively can't fault its execution of the idea of a handicapped woman walking again. That story is good. It is good. But there's too much baggage. The book is just struggling under the weight of all the ideas that 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 surround that very. I wouldn't begrudge anybody liking the book. I don't. I, the book, I think, deserves the vast majority of the praise that it's getting. You know, uh, it's characterizing the the hero well. But it's just, I, I feel I'm getting crushed under the weight that is that is on top of this book, and I, and I, it hasn't pulled me in enough or made enough of a case for why this character should be Batgirl versus anybody else, except for the really manufactured editorial artificial reasons that she is again, and I, I just can't get with it. I, I I have to leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I tend to agree. I mean, I think that I'm with with Triplet though. I'm probably going to keep reading it, but I yeah. I totally get and respect I, I like what you're talking I, about. I've had like one issue that I felt like it, uh, it wasn't bad, but it was just kind of kind of missed me. Was the the uh, the Nightwing issue? I thought well, there is a Nightwing issue for this comic. It just doesn't happen in issue three. It yeah, happens it like issue, happen there. issue eight or or, or nine <laughs> or something. You gotta get through Mirror first. You don't do it in the middle of Mirror. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, other than that, I've I've been happy with it. I mean, I have dropped books uh, for a lot for you know more problems than this book's got right now. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah all right cool well uh i guess we move on then and hope nicole stays up and <laughs> to get a review of it'll be a christmas miracle a christmas, christmas miracle. miracle for the christmas issue that but yeah. i wouldn't blame anybody who had given up trying to listen to the stream at this point <laughs> so it's very listenable it's just a bit odd <laughs> yeah. hey, that's coming from your end we don't know how this sign's filtered through you so. oh i mean the part that's going through them is i'm sure is fine so. that's what you hey, keep saying but i don't I believe promise. you they I promise. survive you will survive i don't know if she's talking about the stream or if she's talking about something else right. but <laughs> i'm still listening so, what she everything's says. all it's gonna work out it's gonna be okay so all right we power on okay I will try this. Keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to review the the yearly Marvel holiday special. Now, I want you guys to take hey. a look at the cover. I think you could show the cover. Um, yeah, lots, lots of characters. Yeah, there's tons characters. of characters. Yeah, the, look, there's, there's tons of characters on here. Well, if oh. you like any of these characters, guess what? I'm not going to be reading about them. There's two <laughs> characters. <laughs> I'm shocked. 
Thor's <laughs> on that cover. Did Thor come back to life just for the Christmas special? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's one of the characters that aren't are not in this comic. So. Yeah, he's because he's dead. <laughs> Well, the, the characters that you see that are on the cover that are on that are in the comic book is Ben and Spidey. Oh, great! Those those are so good you, choices for a Christmas yeah, issue. Yeah, they're, they're good. You they're made good. A, you made a Hanukkah special. Oh yeah, I forgot I'll about that. <laughs> <laughs> so there, it is a, it is a group of four different stories. The first one's called Cold Hearted Christmas. That is the Spider Man one. Yeah, and so um, Cold Heart escapes uh, prison, and Spidey is on the lookout to, uh, to go capture Cold Heart. And so um, basically, you see that he's on the prowl, and he meets up with Cold Heart. And basically, all in all, he just wants to escape to um, be with family. It doesn't work. Um, and he's back in jail, and guess what? Spidey gives him a present. Yay! There you go. <laughs> Okay. That's it. I am not kidding. That's it's very short and sweet. All these stories are. The second one is about Wolverine. You know, Logan teaching a group of the um, of, of the kids on how to get along and get into teamwork. So he's Canadian. So what do you think he teaches them? Uh, what do they have in Evil Canada? Evil Canadian things. Not Christmas. Yeah, uh, he teaches them hockey. Oh. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> So, and he says, there's one rule to this game, and you cannot use your powers. And so you just got to learn how to work as a team. So all in all, they're less than... has ever played hockey in his life. <laughs> 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 so all in all, they have this big, huge hockey match, and at the end, they all get along. Yay! So <laughs> Just like in <laughs> hockey. Yeah, just like in <laughs> hockey. <laughs> yeah, no teeth knocked out or anything. Like I said, I'm going through this really quick because, again, these are sh- sweet, short, simple stories. And we don't know Actually, how long your internet will last. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the third one involves Nick Fury because when you think of Christmas, you think of Nick Fury. Awesome. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Does he kill somebody on, on Christmas or something? <laughs> yeah. he, he, or does he, he does... not kill somebody on Christmas? <laughs> yeah, Christmas. a little bit of both. <laughs> <laughs> So he's fighting a bunch of co- uh, not Cobra, Hydra, Cobra. Cobra! <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> You're They're basically the same. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. So he basically is is you know fighting a bunch of Hydra agents. He's you don't know what his his assignment is. All you need to see is he's got tons of fighting friends. going on. on he's whooping some ass. He breaks a guy. He snaps a guy's femur right in half. <laughs> you know, you're just like, oh, that's kind of nasty. So, and they are looking for his uh, the boss of this compound, and it comes to be. Oh my gosh, why can't I think of his name now? Oh, sorry, the scar. <laughs> so he's trying to get a message out to the scar. And the message is, now spoiler alert, that he ha- has just become a father to a beautiful baby boy. And so, you know, you find out that Scar is working with Nick Fury, that he's just undercover. And, uh, and of course, Nick Fury's like, well, I just can't meet up with you and not come out with an injury. So guess what? He shoots him and he wishes him Merry Christmas. And then after <laughs> he shoots him. That's, that's <laughs> Merry does. Christmas. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Keep the guy, eh? <laughs> like, I've got to make it look good, knucklehead. This way, uh, your cover isn't blown. <laughs> your mission's way too important for the, um, the whole thing just to go flying out the window, which is exactly about what I'm going to do. Merry Christmas. And he flies out the window, and then you see the scar with the picture of his new baby boy and with a tear coming down his face. And I thought that that was the funnest story out of all of them. And, and when is that story set? It doesn't say. It doesn't say. Star was All like right. an old Nazi guy yeah. who I'm pretty sure was dead. It says, there you go. Uh, yeah, the, this, I thought this was kind of, this was kind of cute. The the name of the, the story was All Saint Nick. Did it Nick Fury? Ah, uh, uh, I see what they did there. <laughs> now I'm getting yeah. like images of Nick Fury with like a Santa's uh, beard and a hat. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it was 
it was a cute story. It was really cute. And then, of course, the last one is called Chinese Food for Christmas, which involves Ben. Uh, uh. And he, there's a mysterious guy going around just ransacking the place, when, and he's stealing, like, decorations and causing a hoopla. And then to come to find out, when he finally catches up with this guy who's stolen all this, he's still, stealing it for these uh, orphans who had the the – who didn't get their Christmas because the like the um, like the social workers and stuff they they couldn't get to them in time. So he went out and he stole. Were all they stuff. orphans from Yancey Street? I was gonna ask. Yeah, that. they gotta be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it can't be a Christmas issue unless the Yancey Street gang do something to Ben, <laughs> yeah, or don't so... do something to Ben because yeah. it's Christmas. Because it's Christmas, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so so they they did get their Christmas. Unfortunately, the guy that was stealing all the stuff, um, yeah, he got some clobbering done on him. So oh, poor yeah. shit out cold. It's, you a, know. it's a Christmas clobbering done. Yeah, and he, he's like, <laughs> it's a he's Hanukkah like, clobbering. It's a oh, Hanukkah, Hanukkah clobbering. He, ben teaches him a lesson. He's like, oh, you don't. He's he's like we can go over to my place and we could celebrate Hanukkah together and so he teaches them the meaning of Hanukkah and of course you've got like Moon Knight Being there as well. punched. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you've got you got Moon Knight there. You got Kitty Pride. Jewish? Okay, I think Moon Knight yeah. is Jewish. Kitty Pride. Yeah. I thought Moon Knight worshipped crazy Egyptian gods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know they spent a lot of time in Egypt, so. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. This is just one saying. the one thing about it. Kitty Pride, for some reason, the way who, whoever drew her, her waist is way too skinny. I mean, she looks like there is no such thing in comics. <laughs> they shaved way too much of her like, on the photo, Photoshop. Skinny like, waist you know? in women comics? No, no yeah, such I know. Thing. But it just it just seems out of proportion to me. But besides that, that's the was, point. Yes, yeah, so... enormous breast, like two inch waist. It is yep. kitty. So Ben teaches the orphans about Hanukkah with Chinese food. That sounds about right. I don't know what... Because at the beginning, <laughs> they were all going to get Chinese food, and, you know, he was about ready to head home, and all this happened. So, yeah, so, you know what? For a holiday issue, I, I don't think it's worth the $4. <laughs> yeah, Marvel's holiday issues really fell was... off. They used to be a real event up to a couple of years ago, but they've just sort of... But dropped off and the, i mean the, the last one i remember was when an evil ultron was programmed by someone who hated christmas to attack the avengers when it was that sounds awesome it was great and it was like tony stark had remote controlled <laughs> missiles so that he kept flying after spider woman you know nice <laughs> like i said the, i thought was the nick fury one because you know he he's just kicking butt and doing what he does best you know and then at the end, when he shoots him, he's like, Merry Christmas! <laughs> like, God. okay, there we go. But, yeah, um, I, it was all Merry right. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. <laughs> exactly. Thank uh, you for yeah. change. God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, man. See, it's very cutesy. Like I said, uh, when you see Logan, you know, being Mr. Good face. It seemed a little weird. That was, <laughs> I, I don't think Wolverine has ever been shown to play hockey in his life. Now, obviously, he'd be great at it because he's the best throws of what he does. But yeah. I think that may be a little jump there. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, there's a little more to it, but not a whole lot more. You know, Iceman's out there and he's even cold, so. <laughs> because it's wow. ice hockey. Yeah. Mm. Well, the. And the thing, the thing is, there's there's a few jokes in here that that actually made me laugh a little bit, but um, it was all right. Nothing to write home about. Like I said, I basically gave you the rundown. <laughs> so, nice. Nothing big. Cool. So, there you go. Awesome. Happy holidays. And we made it all the way through without her dropping out, so that's good. Yes. <laughs> oh, even better. Okay. Cool. Well, then and then we lose Chris Triplett, as I said. Oh no. This is awesome. Oh. God, no. We are on a roll, kids. So. Bad day. Christmas has done something. On to, to Batwoman, then. So I'm going to do Batwoman. Um, I'm going to read along since I haven't read this yet. Yeah, Batwoman. <laughs> so let's see. The first part of this is basically two stories juxtaposed, like we're used to. 
Story. Story. Um, one is basically, <laughs> I think, a fairly textful uh, love scene between absolutely um, Batwoman and uh, the other character that I can't remember her name. Maggie. 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 Yes. Thank you, Maggie. Um, all done in like these sort of black and white. Oh, totally um, tinged out, watercolor, gray panels. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful. Totally shots. tasteful. Catwoman, please take note. Yeah, really. Like this yeah, is really there you go. taste. Yeah. Catwoman taste. Yeah, that that doesn't. That, yeah. This this, this is, is how you do a love scene in comics. I mean, yeah. it, it's maybe a, a little bit gratuitous, but this is tasteful than more tasteful than most films. I think it's a nice. I honestly though, I think it's a nice juxtaposition between. Yeah. Because you have again, it's all about the juxtaposition. You have yeah. this this sequence. Um, you have that sequence going on next to Flamebird out on her own, and uh, basically getting gutted like a fish. Um, Yikes! I know. Ow. Yeah, she. Uh, I don't. Who is this uh, hook-handed person? Do we know? You see that? Yeah. No, no, I know there's a character called the Hook, okay. but I don't think this is him. Now, I heard an interesting theory that somebody threw out and i wonder if it's true i'm, I'm very it's like if the next issue is supposed to be the fifth and final part of hydrology i think it is there's a lot has to happen in that last part mm -hmm. but there might be there might be a bigger story that'll grow beyond that because i heard somebody theorize that this could be the hook-handed figure from the urban legend of the hook-handed killer you know two kids in a car man oh crap a, and they'll take you <laughs> hook for a hand. They find the hook on the door because the weeping woman is an urban legend. Yeah, comes to life, apparently. Huh. So are urban legends coming to life in Gotham? It, it, it's like the fables version of urban legends. They're real. They okay, kill you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so there you go. You know. Yeah. So yeah. So next to this images of ecstasy, you have images of. Uh, pain and and suffering essentially as as Flamebird yeah. gets just gutted. But look at how beautiful the pages of pain and but suffering are. I look know. At the way the panels I mean, are burning. Look at this. It's as if the panels are pages burning away at uh, the edges. Oh my god! Uh, oh. This is how a comic is should be drawn. In here that's not a double page spread. No, I mean it's. I think the whole first set here is. Yeah, I think except for the first and last page, everything in this is a double page spread. So all the ads are jammed at the back. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> they are, aren't they? That is one thing I noticed. I got to the end, it's like, like, oh, ads, ads, oh, ads, oh. Yeah, we got to fill these pages. Up. But this is like, suck it, digital readers. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, but. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and this like guy even do what we want. Even like the uh, the image, like the the where it has like the title, they almost can't even yeah. tell it's there for a second. Yeah. I had to pause and is that the oh it is the title yeah. you know, I had to stop and look because it's the bird outline with the smoke and oh man oh her cape God, is amazing I didn't even noticed that that was a bird until just oh, now cool. yeah I'm still busy looking at the words yeah and I mean her cape is great I love how it it really looks like flame even within the panel and bleeds into the edges of the panels even this is how comics should be drawn kids one, i'm just gonna could, well no i don't think you would want every single comic to be drawn this no way. but so, at least so with so that really well okay let me, like, let me... I, I love the art and batwoman but what? i haven't like got the last two issues is the story well let me good. let me because qualify like, what I, I read the first two issues and they were okay but they weren't like the driving focus of this comic it was like this comic is gorgeous you know and that well was like, yeah no and i think there's story here but I, let me qualify what i said about the art i don't necessarily want every comic to look like this i want every yeah. comic to be i think comics should be thought about in this way how do you mm. exploit your medium is the deal to me and that's yeah, I mean, I, that's what i'm seeing just, here yeah it's doing things no other comic is you know if you think you i've said it before if you think you know what a comic book page can look like Think again. Well, it's doing things. It's not just that. It's doing things that, you know, think about like a Bendis comic. It's not a knock on Bendis. But no. Bendis comics could be TV shows. The way that they're Either typically big, laid huge out. huge panels or lots of little tiny panels. Right. Yeah. So they could essentially be a TV show. Like you could essentially use that as a storyboard to make a TV show. This is a comic. You know, yeah, you could sort of do things on film to sort of achieve that same effect, but there's no way to get those two stories juxtaposed together, plus the imagery 
and not like completely overwhelm your audience with, you know, media. So I think it's doing things that are unique to comics, which I like. But anyway, to your question about story, um, yeah, I think there's story here, especially in this issue. I think some elements have picked up. Definitely. Um, you know, we're seeing the relationship between, um, you know, Batwoman and, and Maggie sort of uh, growing. Uh, Flamebird is in. See, you know, that's another uh, reason that this uh, this love scene uh, works, because this is a big step. Yeah. For for the characters. You yeah. Know, this actually means something. Yeah, this is like a relationship. This is not like where it's like, look, 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 Catwoman and Batman are fucking. <laughs> Right. You know. Yeah, this is a this is a relationship that's really That's not what that is. Here. You know, this is something that's been built to for a while. Mm-hmm. And it's it is it is these these watercolor tones uh and and the gray somehow serve to make it more sensual somehow. Mhm. Yeah, like I said. Oh, but rude. maybe I shouldn't dwell on that anyway. Well, it's no, I think that, <laughs> but I think that that's fine. Like I said, I think that's good. You um so Flamebird, though, however, gets found by this, what is it, D-E-O? The, Chase. Yes, the Chase. Chase and that group, which is very bad. Um, and then, I mean, most of this is, uh, there's a... This is you, a detective work. This is a detective work issue. Yeah, basically, there is a lot of detective work going on. Uh, Batwoman trying to find out. We find out some details about the uh, the watery woman. Um, as far as like, I think Batwoman even finds her father and, um, or the, yeah, yeah. the, uh, chase actually gets, um, a name out of Flamebird tells her that the, she's dying. The dickiest move ever. Oh, oh my God. Horrible. Jeez, I hit this woman, but I love her. Yeah. She's like, Oh, there's nothing we can do to save you. Is there anyone we can call a, a parent or boyfriend or someone? And she says, Kate. don't want you to die alone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She gives up Kate's name. Yeah, oh. yeah, very bad, very bad. And then they're gonna go just dump her at Gotham General. <laughs> like, <laughs> so question as to what I assume that Flamebird will survive, but uh, she's not in good shape right now. And yeah, I'm uh, looking at this, I'm like, no, she doesn't. <laughs> I mean, in some ways, it is very much a, a bridge issue, but it definitely it moves. I mean, it definitely un- unveils some elements. And like you said, there's a lot of things that do have to happen, but I think we're set up for those things to happen Yeah. in the next just, issue. It, it seems like if if the next part is the final chapter, there's a lot of stuff still has to be revealed and, and, and resolved in, in one issue. So especially if this hook guy is supposed is, is that, you know, if, if that theory is right, uh, maybe there is a bigger story going beyond these five parts because it is called hydrology after all. So mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a story very much about this water woman and not, not something about urban legends, you know. So I think yeah. you've got maybe a seat for something bigger coming down the line. But, look um, at this page where all the panels are in her cape, fucking brilliant. Yes, and you because <laughs> you see you find out that you know this woman's kids had died because she was drunk or something. I think is what. Oh, that's nice. It. Yeah, yeah, they uh, and they had. Drowned. I mean, if it really is her, if it really is her, that's yeah, this thing. But that's that's at least the the line that she's following. So, um, but yeah, so interesting. Anyway, good stuff. That one, like I said, beautiful work, and I think the story's moving along. Chris, yeah, and definitely triplet, the cliffhanger so at the end of this it. one, which is surprising since it has nothing to do with the Water Woman again. Is is yeah. um. There's definitely, this is more than just a five-part story. You know, there's a lot well, more broken in that book. And you see that Water Woman as Flamebird is getting beat up. Like, she's... Yeah, she just pops up there and is like, sorry. Like, she's overseeing <laughs> all that. So it's kind of like, maybe there is a bit of... There is something creepy about it. Yeah. She's going to be saved by water in the last issue. There you yeah. go. Well, well, from the description, and... she is a water woman, so that does seem kind of strange. Then you have the juxtaposition between fire <laughs> and water. There's a lot of good juxtaposition. I like it. Anyway, it's good stuff. Check it out. Batwoman, you should be reading it. Chris Triplett. I read the first two issues. It was fine. It just, well, you need to uh, just wasn't going. fantastic. You I just got to pick it up. It's better than Batgirl. I think if I needed, if I went back and I read maybe the previous issues, I'd like it better. Well, okay, maybe it's not better than Batgirl, but... Visually, it's interesting. No. As far as I'm yeah, the, concerned, the art, the art is fantastic. I'm not going to dispute that. I mean, it, it's it's 
the best looking, probably the best looking comic out there. I can't think of anything that looks better than that. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. It's just that that care. I I, I kind of wish that the art was in a different book. You know. Because <laughs> then I could buy it. <laughs> eh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. So there you go. That one. Chris McFeely. On to the good one. On to the big stuff. On to awesome stuff. Oh. I'm excited about this. Avengers Academy number 23, in which X23 joins the Team Super uh, Let's see what he did there. Oh. <laughs> I the fingers coming. Didn't lie to me. All right. <laughs> yeah, so um, X23 joining the team, though, is really not the, uh, the, the focal point of this issue. Like, it happens, but... Um, yeah, she's creep. She's creepy, and she creeps out everybody. I mean, the first page is her and Tigra totally going uh, tearing into each other with their claws, just as a little demonstration for the rest of the students. <laughs> and everyone yeah, else. Students, do not fight with X twenty three. She will hurt. Yeah. You. yeah. <laughs> just a friendly but reminder. It it, uh, it does go on then to point out just what a great choice X twenty three is to be on Avengers Academy as somebody who was created in a lab and reared by evil people to do evil. She, she is, um, and as somebody who is really trying to work through that, you know, she actually fits in really well with all these poor kids who have suffered at the hands of Norman Osborn, you know, mm -hmm. metals like they forced you to be like this. Oh, you'll fit right in. And finesse starts talking about how she has difficulty with her emotions as well. And she can help with that. And stuff like that. Flash cards. Awesome. Yeah. I have good, at least finesse <laughs> is trying. So that's nice to know. But uh, the whole issue is narrated by evil future reptile, who is, if we recall, inhabiting the body of past reptile. Yeah. Um, I have trouble, even though I have to say, like, damn you, Christos Cage. Um, because, <laughs> you know, the uh, yes, it is narrated by the, what I guess we would consider to be the well, evil reptile from the future. I say, I, I, but yeah. as the issue unfolds, I sort of start to go, because what you find out, you know, and again, I don't know how linear we'll go through this issue because it's sort of yeah. past and present, but, or uh, present and future, but um, they're not trying to change History. Yeah, they're here to make sure certain things go the right way. Yeah, and so you're like, well, isn't that good-ish? I, mean, I, yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. You, you really think off the back of that um, that one issue where it ends with him being possessed that is like, oh, damn, evil, because they all look evil, and the, the great fear is they're going to become super villains. You know, they're all standing menacingly around a globe looking down at it. <laughs> yeah. Evil, you know? <laughs> That's a society of supervillainy, if there ever was. Yeah, <laughs> but, but... <laughs> this is maintaining that sense of mystery as to whether or not they are or not. We don't know what it is they're trying to secure because Reptil goes around and makes sure a couple of different things happen. And and he, um, it's funny because like when he, well we have we have the the big thing of the issue the big the big promoted part is that this is where uh, Striker and Lightspeed have their talk. And we kind of talked this out uh, on the news last week anyway. But this is the one where Stryker comes out to light speed and she helps him deal with, with the, the aspects of his past. And, uh, and he, well, I don't, wouldn't go so far as to say he helps her, but, uh, you know, he gets her to talk about some of, of her issues. Seems like the wrong word because she seems fairly comfortable with the way she is. Yeah, they don't. I mean, one of the things that they, I mean, they talk about, you know, sexuality a little bit and, you know, touch on, there seems to be, like, one of the things that gets mentioned is, you know, the difference between bisexuality and, and homosexuality. And I, I did, I did like that she touched on mm. some of the bias to bisexuality, really. I mean, there yeah, is. Yeah. A lot of my L and G friends think bees are just gay people who haven't come all the way out. Right. <laughs> yeah, and that and that is very true, and that's it's something that you know. Well, and I don't know. It's 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 interesting to see that discussed because that doesn't get discussed a lot in comics. You know, a lot of times, especially especially since comics tend to be, you know, we talk about and criticize comics for being guy centric. You know, guys are like, "Oh, she's bisexual, awesome," but that's not really. <laughs> I mean, that's not really the way it works in reality. You know you know, for people who are bisexual. And like I said, typically they do get the, oh, you're just not picking a side or whatever. Mm, mm, mm. So I think that's interesting that that gets addressed here. Um, Stryker, though, seems uh, not 
as ambiguous on the issue as Lightspeed does. Lightspeed seems to be comfortable to be sort of, um, well, not really categorized. I think she even almost rejects bisexuality as well. Because she's got nothing going on at the minute. Yeah, so so she's got like, well, I got nothing. Um, But yeah, Stryker seems, I mean, she even asked him the question. It's like, you've been with women, you know, was that what you want? And he's like, well, no. It's like, well, there you go. (laughs) Yeah. So... Um, so I liked it. I thought it was a very, I thought it was very tasteful. Mm. Um, I mean, there's a couple of like little art hiccups here. Like the one noticeable run really is where Spiker, Striker spends one panel bawling uncontrollably and then is fine on in either panel and other side of it, you know? Yeah. Which I don't He's, know how, you know, some kind t- of doofy expression on his face as well. I haven't pulled that bit off too well. Yeah. As he tries to get his composure, but we don't know what the time yeah, I know, but it's like it, it is just like boom. As far it would have been know, nice to have like maybe a visual an... storytelling goes. It does just jumps from maybe like there needed to be another page break in there or something just to give yeah. you, but <laughs> put an ad on that page and then come back to it. But but yeah, um... awesome. I'm sorry. Go ahead. And then there's this great bit that follows that with uh, with uh, metal and uh, Hazmat on X-23, where, where um, Hazmat actually encourages Metal to go up and talk to her um, about his, the fact that he's still having issues over the killings that he did. He had to do in Fear itself. You know, and she, she explains it out to him that all the things he's feeling are totally normal, and that you know, the fact that he feels like he wants to throw up because of it, is, you know, that means that it's good. You know, it's okay. You know, <laughs> the, the Yoda of killers has spoken, as Hazmat said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's but awesome. then, for whatever dicky reason, I don't know, like, why if he had to do it or whatever, but, you know, Reptile just slinks up and then whispers to Hazmat, looks like you've got some competition. And then Hazmat drags Metal away from X-23. And it's like, oh, what the hell, man? Don't uh, ruin that. Don't ruin that for them! But <laughs> apparently, but like, like I said, so it's... So much worse stuff is going to come. Yeah, and, ah. Uh, I love it. But I like I love that that idea that one word or one thing it's it yeah. it's referenced back into Doctor Who. It's like that she looked tired to you. You know, it's just like ah, yeah. How one phrase or one word can change everything. And you see though that he's really put out by this. I mean, it's really like yeah. it's like he hits that he had to do it because yeah. he knows what he knows what we don't know, which is whatever's going to come next. Yeah. Ah. Damn you, Christmas Man, I, I really wish I could have read it. it sounds yeah, awesome. it's really I, I will have it probably next week. But the fit hasn't <laughs> even hit the shan. No, so. we haven't even got there yet, you <laughs> know. Um, the, the, the team, uh, well, uh, Giant Man and Reptile and, and uh, Tiger and Hawkeye head on Quicksilver, head out to rescue a boy named Jimmy Marks, who's being targeted by, what are these guys called again? The, the purifiers. Par- purifiers, yeah. 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 Strikers, religious nuts. And, uh, you know, they take him back to the academy and they think about offering him a position. They're not sure what he, they're not sure if he's a mutant or, or what he is. Um, they think they want to refer to him to the X-Men, you know, but Hawkeye's like, you know, you know stop all this nonsense. Yeah, and Re- Reptile's like, well, let's just ask him. And, and so the kid's going <laughs> to stay at the academy. <sighs> and, you know, you know, you know something's tr- going into obscure territory when I don't know what it is. Wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Because it's not even the cliffhanger. Turns out the kid is hybrid. Who is a human dire wraith hybrid from Rob. Sweet. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> He's a hybrid of human. He had a, a human mother and a dire wraith father who took human form. Uh, he's from Rom. Rom Space Knight. That's awesome. Wow. Yes. What are the chances that Rom Space Knight could show up in this comic? Is there any chance of that? No, they can't use the character anymore. Damn it! <laughs> I know. But, uh, you know, these guys, uh, you know, he's got a plan. He's here for a reason. Reptile knows he's here. But he also, but, but Hybrid can tell that he's a time traveler as well. Because he's still got his, um, uh, he, he can, uh, he can, he, diorites are magic users as well as shapeshifters. Diorithes are diorithes are the deviant scrolls. You know, you know, we have the Eternals and Deviants on Earth. Well, diorithes are the deviant scrolls. That's what they are. Mm. So now you know. I do. And uh, <laughs> so he's here for a reason. Reptile is, uh, you know, is going to help him. 
And then I don't know if we really want to blow this last, last page. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Man. Wow. Uh, yeah. to- the, and I, I, and I, this, I, because yeah. this is the thing that made me go, wow, maybe they're not evil. evil. Yeah. We oh. jump back to the future for one last page. And, you know, there's some... It's like, oh damn, kind of hard. It's not quite heartbreaking because it's so it's more blindsiding than yeah. heartbreaking. But it's like you find out some stuff, and it it's oh you, I can't read you, you just it's hard to say. But it's like it opens up a whole horrible door for what happens to some of these guys down in the future. Yeah, and you know if you read Fred Van Lente's Taskmaster miniseries as well, there's definite echoes of that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. um, uh, things are, are, yeah, there's a lot of, this is really where, as you say, the fit hits the shan, as yeah. far as, I mean, we, we, you know, evil future reptile possessing his past self could have really bubbled under for a while, but <laughs> there'll be none of that. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we are right in here. No, and, and I mean, again, it's, so again, you kind of get sympathy for this character, and then you come back to this moment with hybrid when he's like i'll give you a list of people you can eat yeah you know oh, like, he's not, yeah. and it's you're like um well that's not cool <laughs> <laughs> you know but okay and then you have this last page which is like holy crap uh, he's just trying to do something you know there's there's good mystery here and the typical great just character work of avengers academy you know this one definitely deserves some attention. Hopefully, as I say, maybe that little note in Defenders will have caught more people's attentions. Maybe the word of Strikers coming out will get a few more readers on this issue. And if they stick around, definitely the job will be done. Yeah. This is good. This is, it was just awesome. I loved <laughs> this issue. It is not merely good. I, I loved this issue. So You can't go wrong with Avengers Academy, as we always say. You should be reading this. Cool. I'm yes. glad I started picking it up. Yep. I Excellent. need you. I'm dropping Green Arrow, so maybe I'll put that There on. you go. Drop Green there Arrow. <laughs> I haven't read the new Green Arrow yet, and I can already tell you it's better. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> uh, wow. All right, then. So, moving on. And the only person that can really lead up this review is, again, Chris McFeely. Cause, That's why well, you shouldn't save me to the end, because then I wind up doing two things back to back. Uh, no, we just love to hear you talk, so we're just. Gonna... <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, journey into mystery. Yay! Volst- I mean, you get Volstag in here. You have to. Yeah, you got to get Volstag in there. And it's a Christmas issue of Journey into Mystery. Yay! <laughs> this is very actively a single done in one Christmas issue, so that anybody. I love like- this one. It's great as well. This Christmas like, issue it's... is so much better than the Marvel one. <laughs> <laughs> this is the breathing space issue before the next arc starts in January. Because was, I was listening to an interview with Christos Gage. Uh, not Christos Gage, Kieran Gillen. And um, he, it turns out, is planning a 30-issue arc for Journey into Mystery. Oh, with, wow. with, <laughs> yeah, that is... with Loki? Yeah, it well... Better be. The, well, presumably, yeah. This it's yes. a it's a thirty issue arc, a story, and um, the first third of that, it, the first act of the three act structure was fear itself. The first ten issues, that was it. So here we now have the downtime breather issue in between this and the start of Act Two. Oh, I'm excited. In which Asgard would like to try and strengthen relations with humanity by actually doing some proper Christmassy stuff. Or uh, what is it they, they just call it? Uh, Yule. 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 Yes, that's yeah. it. Yule. Yeah. The all mothers approach Volstag and uh, and and uh, ask him to uh, contribute in some way, and it's like, <laughs> will there be traditional mead <laughs> <laughs> in most bountiful quantities? You know. Oh, uh, what, is, what is it? Uh, we were hoping to recruit you for a part of the festivities. Oh, of course, to tend the great fires and bring the sacrificial meat to the proper boiling point. No, <laughs> oh, stag. Oh, 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 am I to ensure all and sundry are properly anointed with the seasonal blood? No, <laughs> oh, stag. Well, am I to carve the yule log with my whittling mastery? to lead the wassailing about the borough, to crack the whip of the wild hunt across the skies in Odin's own chariot? That's not what we had in mind. <laughs> well, what were you thinking of? Cut. 
two, Bulls tag. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, how awesome would that be? Uh, oh, my God, I would sit on that lap. <laughs> there would be room. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> but it's like, it's like he's. It, I, I think he, he does actually appear to be doing it in Asgard, so it is for the Asgardian children and everything. So it's, have yeah. I got a present for you, little one? Is it a magical battle axe crafted out of enchanted <laughs> uro? No, it's it's some manner of thing made of human plastic. It has a little screen and buttons. I'm sure that will be of great <laughs> use when the trolls come for your family. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay, yeah. yes. Don't, don't blame uh, no. me. Your house gets burned down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should have asked for something more practical. That's oh, awesome. man. Yes. But unfortunately, Loki is not feeling the seasonal spirit because all the other kids of Asgard are bullying him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he gets a Merry Christmas knuckle sandwich. Yeah, the, uh, the popular <laughs> gift of a, a Yuletide fist. God. Yeah. <laughs> Poor kid. That's Oh, poor Loki. <laughs> he, he, as, <laughs> as he says to Ecole, he's beginning to see why he turned evil. Mm. And Ecole's delivering a lot of prophetic jibberty jabber. It's as dark as it gets, just like winter when we're furthest from the sun, everything will turn back to whatever, you know. I always liked the season. Nothing can wreak as much mischief as a well chosen present. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and uh, Loki <laughs> returns to the cave where Leia is staying to find that she has uh, delivered a present. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the present, it turns out, is a load of little tiny fire-breathing puppies who just come out screaming profanities. This is awesome! I love this! I love this! Oh, this so murder, 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 murder! <laughs> you ask for death. Cock my leg on the rainbow bridge. <laughs> I love that little guy. He's so cute. Oh man. Perhaps later. So yeah, it, it turns out that these um <laughs> when they went to hell during fear itself and they left the hell wolf to deal with Garm at the gates of hell. Well, uh Garm has, has written a letter. Uh, I don't know how Garm would write a letter. Presumably she dictated. <laughs> <laughs> what did uh, you think about that? Yes, the letter yes. just says that she and the hell will fought, and then they didn't. And then they did. I love that. It was just like, and then they didn't. <laughs> you sort of see, like, the image, like, turns to the heart shape, and they, like, yeah. I don't get it. Will you explain this to me? <laughs> well, you see, yeah, when a hellhound, Loki's face when he reads when a hellhound and a demigod wolf really care about each other, <laughs> very much. Well, it turns out yes that these puppies are her litter, courtesy of the hell wolf. So, oh, it's so cute! Oh my god, proved to be such a ladies man. <laughs> <laughs> I love that line. <laughs> love it. And, uh, the uh, seer, uh, uh, the the old mother instruct that Loki has to find owners for the seven puppies or uh, take the necessary measures. You know, <laughs> and the little nasty wolf is just barking profanities in front of them. Final high queen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then. And then Journey into Mystery does one of those things that it does so fantastically that we haven't really seen since the first issue, where it takes what could be a graphic novel's worth of story and condenses it down into a lovely two-page spread. Yes. Yeah. Telling it, again, it's, the, it's, a, it's as if it's telling you a story. and It's not as if you're reading a story, but as if you're being told a story. How he takes puppies to... First, Loki went to hell. <laughs> he gave Mephisto, <laughs> Mephisto takes a puppy... He'd taken a fancy to the idea of a nice big dog guarding his domain. Then uh, Gaia decides that she likes the look of one of the puppies and keeps it. <laughs> she, they give one to the new mutants of all random characters to take them to. <laughs> yeah. Because Danny, Danny, um, Danny Moonstar. Uh, she'll fit in just fine with the new mutants. Come on. <laughs> um, uh, Heimdall decides that one would make a great watchdog to help him in his task. 
tear down uh, down in hell thinks you know a good dog to enjoy the hunt would be great and then in that wonderful thing journey into mystery does where it blends story and myth with with our modern method of information dissemination i guess that's really the thing isn't it i've really thought about it before but i suppose you know it's it's the ancient oral tradition of of the dis, 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 dissemination of information versus the most modern way of doing it, which is the internet. You know, it's the mm-hmm. way those methods of telling stories colliding in the pages of Journey into Mystery. Uh, the cutest puppy was placed before a camera, and its legend was charted by Tumblr scribes and religious icons crafted from webcam shots decorated <laughs> with <laughs> fonts. <laughs> it was but naturally cute thing. You what's, you what's really sad? That kind of looks like one of my dogs on that picture. <laughs> oh my God. Does like it breathe fire? <laughs> the, the donation button <laughs> ran true and clear. <laughs> <laughs> At first, this puppy. But unfortunately, he can't find a home for the little, the one that talks and spouts <laughs> down. Imagine that. Bastard, when... bastard, bastard. <laughs> bastard, bastard, bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody, nobody wanted him. Like Mephisto's got that. Look. Well, that's great. It goes all the way back <laughs> through. Oh, I nearly fell over when the, you see the, the the panel of him trying to give the dog to Tear, and it's biting on his good arm. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah which is just ironic. <laughs> it's lovely. Not again. That is awesome. <laughs> No, but it, yeah. And of course, you know, I, I the uh, the the metaphor is is perhaps laid on a tad thick at the finale here. I, I mean, I think that the um, the uh, the all mothers doing it deliberately, you know. But they say, you know, they have the traits of the mother. This little dog is the father's child. You must understand that some creatures are just bad. Oh, I wonder what they could possibly be drawing mm, a parallel with. Yeah. And of course, Loki decides that he can't kill the little puppy by throwing it back into the roots of the world tree, even though, like, Nicole sitting there egging him on, you know? Yeah. Unfortunately, Loki goes and gives the dog a name. Which Story. is awesome. Story. <laughs> and he is a good dog. Do you know how to fetch? Do you? I'll take that, <laughs> I'll take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I want more of this dog. <laughs> well, Dude, this dog right. better be back. This dog better be back because, my gosh, I love him. <laughs> He's living in, the, in the Leia, with Leia in her dirty great hole in the ground. As she keeps calling and twitches <laughs> by that. <sighs> I have a present for you. If you say the gift of friendship, I will pummel you fiercely. <laughs> no, uh, n- no, uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he punches her in the arm and gets blasted for his trouble. Are you yeah. a fist? <laughs> uh, he argues with the dog about what his name shall be. <laughs> Thor, a Loki and Thor, a boy and his dog. Not Thorry, Death Ripper. Leo <laughs> 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 Thorry, the death that prowls on legs. <laughs> I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Oh my god. You're going Loki, to be a good boy. <laughs> Loki sees himself in this little dog and you know he's going, you know, he's they're going to be he's going to make sure he turns out well because you know it's it's I think it's Loki's proof of himself, you know. If he can turn this dog around, this will be proof that he can make good too because he's doubting yeah. him. You know the whole thing about this is that the season is like he you know, he basically won the war for everybody, but he had to he had to arrange for Thor to die so he could, and nobody can know that except the old mother, who essentially now has him under their thumb because they know that. Yeah, and nobody else can because you know, it's not everybody hates Loki already. So he's already doubting himself. This season, as they say here, he has it's at his worst. You know, he could see why evil is so appealing whenever everybody treats you this way, but that's the great thing is like. That's far more, so much more interesting than the idea of little Loki actually going evil. So the sad thing is, years from now, when some other writer decides to turn him back into adult Loki and he turns evil again, it's going to be such a loss to society. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. for these 30 issues <laughs> that we will sit and we will enjoy as Loki actually tries to turn himself around and tries to make a proof of that concept in this dog. I don't think that anybody had any surprise that Loki kept this dog for himself. And he's going to make a great addition to the cast as well. And I oh, would I say that anybody who uh, picks, picks this issue up as a single one 
would hopefully know to judge. Because this is the best Christmas comic, like, in years. Yes, <laughs> yeah. definitely. I've read in years. Because it's not just some, yes. you know, I mean, <laughs> certainly one-shot Christmas specials, which are funny, have uh, or saccharine, you know, they have their place. Everybody's a little more lenient for that sort of thing around the holidays. But, you know, this is a great little story that is so much more than that. And in and, and all the ways, it still, it still manages, even in the midst of all of that, to exemplify all the best traits of Journey into Mystery from its, you know, blend of, of comedy and mythology and its central themes of storytelling and the collision of the old ways and the new. Even in Volstagg playing Santa, you know, mm-hmm. screaming. Yeah. That was fun. Well, and... and... Nothing is more original Christmas than, you know, a Norse story about Christmas because <laughs> it sort of invented the damn thing. But Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh and also yeah, I should probably point out the art on this issue now is by Mitch Brightweiser. And when I read oh. his name there on the uh on the credits page, before, even before I turned the page, I was like, Oh, Mitch Brightweiser, he is gonna be a great match for this book. Yes, I was right. I <laughs> And, you know, and that's something I didn't mention, but I love the art, especially these early yes. panels. I mean, it's so just glad. like, it's kind of got almost like, it's like this blend of like a very classic Marvel style with yet a very sort of modern stylized take. I, I really <laughs> like it. It's like a Christmas card. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like and you went, Loki looks like a child and not, you know, yeah. a worn down adult. Hey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, uh, Will Sportasio, if, you know, I think we all agreed, if we could never have him draw another issue again, that'd be lovely. Yeah. Please, yeah, <laughs> yeah, put on something else. I don't know. Just something I don't, I don't mind think Richard I don't Elson. Uh, yeah. I don't mind Richard Elson drawing it. He drew the, um, uh, the Mephisto issue. Mm-hmm. And I think yeah. he, might be, he might be doing something soon. I mean, he might be doing something else with the series. But it was a real shame to lose um, Braithwaite. Yeah. Uh, just like two or three issues before the end of uh, of the Fear Itself storyline. But uh, Brightweiser would be a really, really good fit for it. There's just, there's a, uh, I, I don't mean this in a bad way, but there is a sort of bleakness about the way he's drawn this issue, which is, you know, very much in tone with the, the wintry setting of it as well. But, but it just, you know, it, there's just this thing, it freaking screams Christmas. Yeah, it really yeah, does. It's 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 just beautiful. I I, I love it's this. Like, it's like so night and day difference from from uh, Portacio's art. I'm 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 I love it. I I hope this guy stays. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we'll see next month with the start of the next story arc with Mephisto coming back and Damon Hellstrom's in it as well. Ooh. And, uh, you know, hopefully this Christmas issue will pull a couple of extra readers in. Or perhaps just Marvel's thinning down of the line will convince people to check out some new books. That would be good. That would be good. Um, or maybe our mystery, recommendation. I think. Our recommendation alone should gain, like, two readers. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean. Probably two readers look just leave. Yeah. No <laughs> balance out. Yeah, Those balance. guys like it out. Oh. Uh, Fanboy Versus said it was good. I better drop that. I don't. Uh. <laughs> <sighs> Couldn't understand what happened on that tech. No, this show. is just such a fun story. I love it. Come on, you cannot go wrong with puppies. Murder, murder, <laughs> murder! <Yeah. laughs> Not even if a little devil dog go wrong with puppies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's so great. And seven, seven's a very mythical number. So anyway, it's good stuff. So, um, Awesome. So yes, read Journey into Mystery, read Avengers Academy, and we're sort of flaky on the rest. But anyway. Um, <laughs> read back <laughs> And, yeah, you probably should read Black- Batwoman. We're not unanimous on that, but, you know, we think it's good eh. stuff. I like Batgirl. Right. But, Journey into so. Mystery, for sure. But definitely oh, yeah. Journey into Mystery. Definitely, definitely, definitely Journey, yeah. Avengers Academy, especially since we're coming up on uh, Avengers vs. X-Men. And we know that some of that's yeah. going to tie in. We've got Children of Crusade is coming to an end. That's going to yeah. be big. So the prologue for Avengers versus X Men was out this week. Now that was Ave- Avengers X Sanction number one, but none of us read it. Nope. I hear it's terrible. You can tell how excited we are. <laughs> uh, it's nothing to do with excitement for the. Uh, Kilby read it and he told me, "Don't buy this. It ain't worth the money." And I thought, "Well, okay. Why did you buy it then? I, that doesn't seem like something you'd want." And he said, "I just wanted it." Mm. You know. Well, there you go. 
<laughs> and Gilby has a weakness for 90s, <laughs> the vestiges of the 90s. You know, Jeff Loeb and Ed McGuinness doing Cable is about as 90s as it gets, short of Rob Liefeld doing the cover. Which one was mm. this one? I, Avengers X Sanction number one. Yeah. Uh, that, I actually read that one. Wow. Oh, you should have talked about it. It was we a well, no, you, you should have actually talked I, about I, it. I, I didn't. I <laughs> wanted to review something holiday ish. Yeah, so. yeah, no, you were quite right doing it. Crap anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it was. So but it go. wasn't bad. It, it, it's, it's got my interest, Sanction does. So. Yeah. Turns out my... Cable's not dead and he comes back in time to kill the Avengers because Blacksmith, remember Blacksmith from the 90s, tells him yes. that the Avengers are going <laughs> to yeah, Seriously. Uh. He's going to tell them that the Avengers are going to kill Hope and that's the catalyst for mm. him. Yep. So, so, uh, I'm, so I'm holding out hope that my 20 issues with Avengers on the title will hold out for May. So. Do you have a bet with someone or something? Um, I actually, my shopkeep did say I think he would do something cool for me if I was right. So I don't know what that's going to be, but you know, <laughs> I just like to be right. That's more important than anything, really. I just like to be right. And so. you'd like us to know it. Yes. Yeah. And when I'm wrong, I like to try to forget it. So and pretend that didn't happen. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, there you go. That's our show. Um, as we mentioned before, we will not be here next week. Uh, we are taking a week off for the holiday, uh, so don't come next week. But the week well, after we might that, not be back, well, we might not be back the week after either. That's New Year's Day. New Year's, yeah. I think New Year's Day. We, I, I'm okay with doing New Year's Day. I don't um, know that I'll be here. Okay. I, I don't care. I could go either way. Well, let's take two weeks off then and just call it good. I, I think so yeah, we'll just start. And then we'll come back with our, with the best and worst of. Yes. yes. The end of year show. Yeah. Yep. So we'll take two weeks yeah. off. We just decided that now. Editorial <laughs> decision. Right on the fly. So, We're allowed. so yes, we can. So we won't we we won't be back on the twenty fifth. We will not be back on the first. So check us out that week after, which would be what the eighth, I guess. Yeah. So yeah. come back uh, on the eighth. We'll have our best of. Um, the way we're looking. Send at, us your thoughts. Yeah. Yes. The way we're looking in that at that um, is uh, we're looking at things that were published between uh, December first of oh Wait, of two, first. because it makes an even year. No, because we're doing the show on the 8th, so... Right. January 1st to January <laughs> because 1st we've already been... would be the year 2011. <laughs> yeah, but I, I we're think all... could, I think you could include, like, the last Did couple... Did something come out in December of 2010 that you just really want to include on the list? God, no, I, I was trying to get a 12... <laughs> no, I wanted it to be before this month because we were thinking about it this month, and I, I really well, don't want late editions. We don't have so to get people's opinions until the end of the month. You're harsh and mellow here. I had a whole thing <laughs> figured out, you know. And we we sent Can out a document harsh? and had an email, you know, that you could have replied to without blindsiding me on I the know, show. No, but I just like whoop back come around at you. <laughs> if you find something that you found in December that you have to mention, yeah. you have to mention it. It's not going to kill us. But I'll us. mention that it didn't come out this year. So anyway, fine then. <laughs> <Yeah>. Anything <laughs> published in 2011, check it out. Let us know. Uh, I we're guess looking what at one the categories for like best ongoing. Um, best we new... had this whole document that I oh. sent out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That like, I don't anybody could have. I don't need to include the worst too because. Oh, I don't like including the worst. Too. I don't like including the worst. I want to just do the I best. Do. So put your baker there. You go. <laughs> yeah, that was. <laughs> that's pretty easy. Let me pull up the list here. <laughs> I don't know why I print these things. Mm. No, you need to read it off anyway. <laughs> anyway. Look, look at McFeely making you work, Jamie. I know. I was really... So, best artist, best colorist, best letters, best writer, best series, best single issue, best mini, best event, best trade, and best graphic novel. So, All that best series is going to Amazing Spider-Man, right? I mean, there's like no... Well, content, I think there right? should, we should probably do best, best <laughs> ongoing and best new. You know, like the Eisners do. Best ongoing and best new. So ongoing meaning it's been around longer, best new. Yeah, just best ongoing, so best series. That, well, let's best just continuing do, series and best new. Well, launch. let's just do best new series then. Be no, best series like, be the that best started ongoing. in the 1960s. <laughs> <laughs> well, best new series would be something that started in 2011. Best series would be anything, even if it started in 2011. 
Right. Probably Amazing Spider-Man. All right. There's sneak preview. Probably Amazing Spider-Man. Probably Amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> no, mine's going for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. But see, now all the 52 have to fight <laughs> hey, for, hey, for new series. Hey, TMNT would be the best new series because it's only like four yeah. years in. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Best mini. Then the question becomes, do we consider the new 52 new series or not? Uh, hmm. Hmm. That's a good question. That's question. Good question. Is Daredevil really a new series? Mm, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it is the best. But, mm. <laughs> best mini Taskmaster. That's easy. So anyway, just a little preview here. Um, Dude, my answer is totally different from you guys because I don't read like mainstream stuff. It's okay. You don't have to be right. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't have to. I'm right. I am right. I am the girl of this group. I will make sure I'm right by the end of the night. How do... <laughs> Somehow I believe that. Um, anyway. <laughs> So anyway, that's just a quick preview. I'm going to go all the way through it, but that's what we'll be, we expect. I don't even know that we'll do – we may – I don't even – I doubt that'll be – that'll be the whole show, I think, on the 8th as we'll just – Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll just talk yeah. that. We'll just go all the way through. Um, best of. So be thinking of your best of. Tweet us. Um, use a hashtag. I think I came up with a hashtag. Yes. Uh, FBV best of 2011. So – I'll tweet that as well. Uh, you should tweet that because I'm on a different computer, so I can't. I'm not using Twitter right now. Yeah, so I'll tweet that, and then uh, so send us your ideas, your thoughts over Twitter, uh, comments, email, however you want to, and uh, you know, because we may not think of something. It's a whole big year. We may we may yeah. not think of something. I don't remember what came out six months ago. Fear itself yeah. kind of killed my head in the middle of the year. <laughs> yeah, it really. Are, are you are you sure we can't do a worst of list just for fun? No. <laughs> Because there's we, so much crap no, I read. I, I refuse because I'm uh, I'm with I'm with Chris on this. I like to talk about the positive stuff. Okay, if it, if it was bad, survival guide for big for hunting Bigfoot. Come I don't want to. Awesome. Here's the thing. I don't want to give time to things that are bad. Right. How, how about like I don't a, want a, to give a, a them any credit. Category that that says. We're so glad this is over. Positively glad this is over. Does that, does that make <laughs> no? That doesn't off? count. No no no. <laughs> Veto. I get, uh, I get, uh, no, I get host veto on that. I will just do a different no. podcast. So big. <laughs> no. We, uh, no, I really want to talk about the good stuff. You know, there's plenty of good okay. stuff that doesn't get talked about enough, and there's plenty of crap stuff that gets talked about too much. So let's talk about the good stuff. That's what we like here. So anyway, there you go. Check it out. Uh, all that good stuff. So have a great holiday. Enjoy your new year, and come back and join us on the 8th. Yeah. It'll yeah. probably be a show then. Yeah, it'll be a decent show. I think we'll we'll probably fill the regular time, but like I so said, we won't do reviews. And I believe that is be my first year anniversary with Fanboy Versus. Excellent, uh, even yeah, better. <laughs> we'll so. be closing on our second birthday then. As well. Yeah, and it's going to be issue eighty-five, giant size issue eighty-five. Wow. Foil stamped. So awesome! All right, well, let's get out of here. Have a good holiday. Uh, thanks everybody for joining me, my crew. Uh, for Nicole Hill, for Chris Triplett, for Chris McFeely, I'm J.D. Church, and please tune in next time when it'll be Fanboy versus. This has been Fanboy versus. Visit us at tfradio.net for show notes and to subscribe to the podcast. Follow us on Twitter at TF Radio for news and updates. Like the podcast? Leave us feedback on iTunes. Copyright 2011, Radio Free Cybertron. <laughs>